Breaking news, Canva came out with some new features for making their text look fabulous. So if you, my dear realtor, are making videos for YouTube, this is how we're gonna step up your thumbnail game. Welcome back, I'm Karen Carr and I teach real estate agents how to get more business from YouTube. Now on this channel, some of my most popular videos have been all about using Canva how to outline yourself in Canva, like in this video. How to make overlays to use in iMovie, because sadly, you can't do it in iMovie. So you make it in Canva and then you import it, which is a huge pain in the rear end, which is why I eventually moved to WeVideo. If you wanna see why I'm using WeVideo, it's popping up in the cards right here, but I digress, that's another subject. Let's get back to Canva, because I know you all love you some Canva as much as I do. Now, historically, when I was making thumbnails in Canva, and yes, most of the time I make my own thumbnails, and I do it in Canva, not Photoshop, not some big fancy video editing program, good old cheap Canva. But Canva had some limitations. If I wanted to make a thumbnail that looked like this, where there was a bit of a shadow behind the text, and it was a bit blurry, and there was a shadow behind the box, and it was a bit blurry. There was not an easy way to do that in Canva until now. So let's head over to my computer and I'm gonna show you what those changes are because they're pretty freaking awesome. All right, so here we are in my Canva account. Let's say that I am creating a brand new thumbnail and this is as far as I've gotten. I've picked what I want in the background. I put a little blur over it. I made it kind of transparent so it's not gonna pull focus away. Then I wanna add my photo and my text, right? So I would go to one of my folders and find one of the goofy thumbnail pictures that I've taken and you know, how I do my thumbnails, right? I take a boatload of goofy photos and say, I want to have this be the photo. So you click on the photo because I don't want this background behind me. And I go to effects and I say background remover and it automatically removes the background from my photo. So now it will just be, drum roll please, this with no background behind it. I can then make it bigger, make it larger. I can put a shadow behind it and I'm just going to move it over here to the side because what I really want to talk about is text. So let's say that I want to put in some compelling text to put on my thumbnail. Let's say that the text I'm going to put on this thumbnail is should you do it. That is my text. I'm going to change my font because I don't really like that one. I'm going to do luckiest guy. I would then duplicate it by hitting this little button up here, the little square with the plus, which is duplicate. And let's say that this is going to be my text is should you do it? I'm trying to get some compelling text on the thumbnail in a very large font, maybe that's a little too large, that will be easy to read so someone doesn't have to go get their reading glasses. So let's say that's gonna be the text on this thumbnail. Next, if you hit the letter R on your keyboard, bing, it automatically puts a rectangle onto your design. That was the greatest little shortcut ever. I'm going to make it so that it is just slightly larger than my text. It doesn't need to be gigantic. And I don't really love that color. So let's say I'm going to pick a different color. Maybe I want it to be yellow, but I want it to be like, let's say I want it to be like that. And then I can duplicate that and put it behind this guy. I'm going to go position backwards and I'm gonna make it the right size. It doesn't need to be so large. Cool, so automatically putting the colored box behind the text makes the text stand out a lot more than it did before. So if you do nothing else, do that. Now, previously, if you wanted to have a shadow behind your text, it was very convoluted. You could do it, but 
as my husband says, because he's from West Virginia, you had to kind of bubba and skeeter it. It was not an easy process. There was a way to do it. It didn't look all that great, but it was good enough, but it was many, many, many extra steps. But now the beautiful people at Canva, it's like they looked inside my account and said, how can we make her life easier? And then they did. So mwah, thank you people at Canva. You're just gonna highlight the text, go up here to effects and look. Shadow, lift, splice, echo. Look at all these awesome designs. So you just choose which one you want to use. If you use this one called lift, that's what it ends up looking like. It's very, very subtle. If you're going to use this one, the shadow, it pulls it up like this. It defaults to a certain color, but if you don't like that color, you can change it. I want to stay with black. How big should the offset of the shadow be? You can make it bigger or smaller. You can then decide which direction should the shadow be. But I like that. What about the blur? I want to make it a little bit blurry. Do I want to make it more transparent? And after you're all finished, you click off of it and say, that, my friends, is a work of art. Did you love that? Did I just like blow your mind? You're welcome. If you want to learn how to start getting business from your YouTube channel, I'm going to be doing a free five day challenge. It is starting on August 17th. So you need to get set up now so that you don't miss it. Here is the link. Go ahead and sign up for the five day challenge and I will see you every day starting August 17th. Let's do this.